Batman The Audio Adventures. You reach Scratchy's Lipinski, which means you ain't got another bookie who will still take your calls, you degenerate. Hey, it's your paycheck, Pally, but don't forget to take your kitties to the circus every once in a while, huh? Don't put that on my conscience. I'm still taking action on the kid Lazarus, fighting four to three for the kid. Bob Thomas' game is off the board on account of Hop Goods' injury and Manson's, uh, incarceration? <laughs> Whatever you want to call going to Arkham Asylum semi voluntarily. I don't know. Gentlemen, place your bets. Hey, Crutches, give me a nickel on gas lamps to sweep the double header. I smell a pennant, baby. Go gas lamps! Crutches! I got two bills. Says Cast Iron Callahan doesn't get through five today. The man was a bum even before his wife got kidnapped, and I ain't got the patience for it. Hey, what's the money line in Central City? Yeah? Okay. Hey, Crutches, put three bills on the demons for me, and hey, listen, guy I know knows a guy who said word on the street says Catwoman is in some really hot water, like nine million dollars worth of hot water. Huh, do cats like water? I forget. So listen, you taking any action here? I got a dime that says the blind mice gang are gonna be the ones to bag the cat. Crutches, my man, I'll take the streak before the fifth inning, two Gs. And hey... I hear you're taking Catwoman action. Boy, it's a crowded field. I like the Sycamore Street Syndicate. They really want it, but give me 500 on the Soup Bone Gang. It's a long shot, so to sweeten the deal, I'll take two to one odds. Hey, Cratches, you hear about this Catwoman thing? I tell you what, put my whole bankroll on Box of Chow in the dockyard dogs. They got a honey of a score to settle with Miss Whiskers. Crutchy, I got 5G, says the kitty on Catwoman is going to box a chow in the dockyard dogs. Crutches, we're talking Catwoman down here, and I'm hearing nothing but dockyard dogs. Crutches, what you got for dockyard dogs? Dockyard dogs looking like an easy favor, Crutches, but that ain't all. A lot of hubbub down at box of chow's joint since early. My money is smart money, and smart money says the cat gets fixed tonight. Gotham. A cozy den for wolves that never sleep. Join us now for another tale of life and death in Gotham City, March 5th. With impeccably inconvenient timing, Batman has learned he must intervene quickly to prevent Two-Face from undergoing treatment with a dangerous failed pharmaceutical experiment called Joy Cure. What he does not yet know is that the administrator of this dubious care is none other than the depraved drug lord known as the Scarecrow. While Batman redirects his attention to the rescue of his tragic former friend, the animals of the city prowl unsupervised streets. <sighs> On a desolate stretch of urban nowhere, in the depths of Gotham's benighted park row, the frantic footfalls of a furious pursuit. <sighs> Thundering down a squalid alley in a snarling riot of swinging jowls and flinging spittle, a half dozen prize winning bull mastiffs relentlessly run down a notorious neighborhood stray. <sighs> Good doggies. Come on. I just gave to the Humane Society. You're making me feel like all day sucker. <laughs> Altogether, it's 700 pounds of imminent canine aggression. But the four legged dogs closing in so quickly behind her are only a portion of Catwoman's distress this evening. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the two legged variety a pair of gang boss Boxer Chow's dockyard dogs, swinging sawed off pool cues and lustily barking orders to their frenzied pets. Go get the cat, Ripper. Where is the cat, Fang? <laughs> We got you now, Catwoman. I bet you'll wish you never crossed box a chow. <laughs> In the pallid light of a chewing gum advertisement, Catwoman stumbles. <laughs> She's a goner. Indeed, one way or another, the chase ends now. With a pack of hounds closing the distance, Catwoman heaves up a manhole cover. <laughs> nice try. You think them dogs won't follow you into the sewers? Into the sewers? Yeah, not in these stockings. I just need something heavy enough to go through the display case of Fenton's butcher shop. Huh? <laughs> And the overstuffed butcher shop display case disgorges meats of every description. A carnal cascade of cutlets, chops, and fillets amass in a well-marbled mound on the sidewalk below. Uh-oh. The dockyard dogs watch with growing dread as their leverage over the situation gorges blissfully on the sudden smorgasbord. 
Now then, as for you, little pups, I don't want to be the kind of person who has a hard day at work and then comes home and kicks the dogs. So take what's coming to you like bad doggies, and I promise not to use my boots. Oh, crap. Well put. Run for it, bingo! You said it, Pongo. Ugh, no. I'm just not doing any more running. You ask too much. Yeah! Catwoman's rawhide lashes forth and catches one of the fleeing dogs by the ankle. But please, Catwoman, it's a whopper of a payday on you. Who wouldn't be tempted? Just business, right? Just business. So, so how's about you go easy on me? Way ahead of you. I plan to leave you just barely capable of limping home to tell your boss what happened. That price on my head, Boxer Chow can't afford it. A mercifully short thrashing later, the chastened cur is running home with his tail between his legs. Tell that lousy mutt to keep his distance. I'm sick of scratching his fleas. But from the look of the car barreling down the street at her, Catwoman's night is not over. Come on. Still winded from the long chase, she has little time to react before the brown sedan screeches suddenly to a halt. Get in. Vicky Vale Gotham Gazette? What are you doing this far downtown, Miss Uptown? Looking for you and hoping to find you before Boxer Chow did. Better late than never, so get in. I didn't call a cab. Look around, Catwoman. The dogs chased you deep into 7th Street Savages territory. You really feel like walking? Lord Harpoon will appreciate your availability. I don't love being seen in this car. You better hope you're not seen. I better hope you're not seen. I don't think my press card will spare me from the kind of trouble you're in, Catwoman. Trouble? What trouble? Boxer Chow, Lord Harpoon, Rat King Cole, Maximilian Monkey Shines. Oh, and the entire Thorn Cartel? I know I'm leaving a lot out, but those are at the top of the leaderboard according to the odds being run by Crutches Lipinski. Crutches is taking bets on my murder? Ugh, that is a pretty good racket. Go Crutches. What's the vig? Catwoman, you're in serious trouble. Your business model was always unsustainable, chiseling away at the underworld bit by bit. Well, this is the cave-in. Okay. Now every last chump you rolled is united in a competitive effort to see you suffer. Well, when you put it that way, sure. But you're a wordsmith. So what are you gonna do? The way I see it, you have one option, and that's to leave town, lay low. Now, I've got a girlfriend with one of those gorgeous, ultra-modern metropolis penthouses. Metropolis? With the roof garden and the atomic appliances and a private air taxi dock. You could stay until- Never. Could you imagine me in metropolis? That place is lousy with, what do you call it? Decency? That or something that smells like it. No, I'm on a short leash, I'm afraid. And it doesn't go beyond the Gotham City limits. Cats shouldn't be on leashes. So what can you do? Where can you hide? Oh, I'm not going to hide. I'll manage. And if I can't, I'll get protection. From who? You got one friend. And I can't protect my morning newspaper from being swiped. From the Santa Priscans. No, no way. The Santa Priscan drug cartels. Are you insane? Crime isn't just a living in Santa Prisca, Catwoman. It's a religion. It's the way to salvation for a cult of fanatics. Their foot soldiers are chemically enhanced monsters. The only small mercy we have in this hellhole is the fact that the Santa Priscans have never set up shop in Gotham City. Oh, drive. You made your point. The very last thing this town needs is more sharks in the tank. So when every crook in town is after you, I guess there's just one person to turn to. Thank goodness. You're calling Batman. Huh. He'd love that. No. When every crook is after you, you throw yourself on the mercy of the King Crook. The crook the other crooks are afraid of. In Gotham City, like it or not, that's the penguin. Oswald Cobblepot seems an unlikely candidate for humane feline rescue. What will be his price? The answer in a future tale of life and death in Gotham City. Wayne Foundation hosting the International Children's Good... Haley Circus, step right up for the grand reopen. Flashacker belts one deep, a blown foul, softy. Come to passion. Come to paradise. Come to the beautiful island of Santa Prisca. From the pristine white sands of Browning Dog Beach, to the sparkling shores of Seven Thumb Bay, to the precipitous cliffs of Backstabber Falls, Santa Prisca is calling to... Gotham. A ceaseless spindle that collects what winding threads are spun from panic. Join us now for another tale of life and death in Gotham City. This landscape is pitted and scarred from years of open warfare. As far as the eye can see, the scorched destruction of a bitter stalemate. 
This is the inside of a man's mind, a dwelling built for a single occupant that nevertheless houses two. But tonight, for once, these unbearably tight confines don't echo with the clashes of conflict. Tonight, after a generous dose of a dubious decoction known as Joy Cure, an altogether new sound is heard in the shockingly peaceful precincts of the mind of the man known as Two-Face. Hey, hey, pretty boy. Huh, what? Is, is something wrong? No, that, that screwy sound. Do you? Yes. Clear as ringing crystal. Oh, good. Was worried we lost track of the whole bag of marbles. No, that, that's not what's happening. Dr. Crane, are you still there? Yes, I'm right here, Harvey. You can leave your blindfold on until I tell you to remove it, please. Something's happening. What, what is that sound we're hearing? Never heard it before. Of course you haven't, that's harmony. Two-Face, you've never known a moment of it in your entire tortured existence. Until now. Harm a knee? It's when two voices become one. Where is it? It's all of you, Harvey. It's... it's sad. Uh, I don't know how you say it. It's... Empyrean. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, college boy. Didn't I tell you it would be? The joy cure has brought peace at last to your long inner conflict. You simply must trust me. Remember we talked about trust when you agreed to put that blindfold on for me? You, you said to cooperate. We cooperated. Yes, Harvey, cooperation. That's exactly what today's lesson is all about. And you have cooperated with everything I have asked of you ever since I gave you your first dose of joy cure. Cooperating with me is easy. I want you to cooperate with you. We don't follow you, Doc. We have oh so many ways we wage war within ourselves every day. You're just an unusually extreme case. It's the influence of fear. When what we know is false coincides with what we fear is true, that's a conflict. And there are casualties. Fear. Sure. That figures. For example, you told me that you have a horror of high places. Is that right? Heights? We hate them. Severe ac... Uh, acrophobia. <laughs> yes. Yes. Acrophobia. An irrational fear of heights, they say. Not bad. Well, Harvey, I'm going to take off your blindfold now. And then I'd like you to tell me how irrational you believe your fear of high places to be. As the heavy black silk falls, the mismatched eyes of Two-Face suddenly behold the vertiginous view from a narrow ledge outside the window of a towering skyscraper. Two-Face teeters unsteadily, blinking in disbelief. Yes, Harvey, quite a high place you find yourself in, isn't it? Tell me, how do you feel? We. We feel, we, were wonderful. <laughs> Ooh, would you get a load of that new? Hey, Doc, come on out here and lamp this scene. Thank you, I'll, I'll stay here inside where it's safe. You realize you are one step and a hundred feet from the pavement below? Yep. Your numbers check out, Doc. And your crippling fear of heights? I don't understand it. We, we've always hated high places. But today, top of the world, ma! Bet you can see the courthouse from here if we stand on our tippy toes. Oh, do be careful, Harvey. <laughs> yep, there she is. Magnificent. Doctor! There's no fear. Is your drug doing this? Fear is a furnace which must be fed. What I have done is empty your mental coal tinder. In fact, you might even dance a jig on that narrow ledge if I asked you to. Are you asking us to dance, doctor? What luck? We've been taking lessons. The opening steps of a tango rain down upon the narrow ledge at a delirious tempo. How's this for a hoofing? Oh, oh my God. 
Now you really must be careful. You ain't seen nothing yet. Bravo! Bravissimo! Not a hint of terror in your eyes. You see, Two-Face, your two sides united are a dauntless bulwark to petty fears. Why, you would walk to the end of that flagpole if I asked you to, I bet. A 15-foot-long flagpole extends out into space like the shaft of a colossal wayward arrow fired into the building's upper stories. Yes, I want you to show me you can walk it like a tightrope, like a flag. Looks pretty narrow. It's plenty wide enough, Why? Like, it's just a matter of balance. I'm sure Two-Face knows a thing or two about the need for balance. Walk to the very end. Sure, Doc. Sounds good to us. How's this, Doc? Ta-da! Out to the very end of the pole. Congratulations, Harvey! <laughs> Whoa! No, nothing to it, Doc. Like you said, it's all about balance. Now, this next part is very dangerous. When you're ready, turn around and come back. What do you mean, when we're ready? Simply discuss it amongst yourselves. When you mutually decide you want to come in, turn either to your left or ultimately turn to your right and come back. Hold up, hold up. Discuss it. Either left or right. Just tell us which one. I'm not going to, Harvey. You're gonna have to decide. Okay. You decide. Not me. You pick. No, no. I'm insisting you choose. I uh, pass. Pass. You do it. But, Harvey, turn right or turn left. Then, once you've turned, do you lead with your left foot or your right? The choice is yours. Mm -hmm. Do you want no. heel to toe no. or toe to heel? Harvey, so many choices to make. Ah, uh, but you're... Without your coin, I'd forgotten. Doctor, what? Please help me. I'm so, so... Afraid. Yes. And isn't it fascinating? The joy cure is a miracle at curing everyday phobias like your fear of heights. But it reacts very badly to the kind of serious issues you have, Harvey. Your real fear isn't high places. The fear you're feeling right now, that's the fear that defines you, Harvey. The fear of having to make a decision, any decision for yourself. No coin, no counsel, just the two of you. No, uh, no, please, please help me, doctor. Tell me what to do. I'll do whatever you say. Careful, careful, you're slipping. Did you know a baby's first instinct is a fear of falling? I would love to have been involved in conducting those experiments. I'll kill you. You said I. That's a breakthrough. One of you is taking charge. I couldn't tell who spoke, though. Would you mind? Please, please. I, I, uh, I can't. Hold on. Come on now. You simply need to agree upon a strategy before it's too late. Dr. Crane, I, I know you said you didn't want to be not now, Miss Gold. Uh, well, uh, I'm just so sorry to, uh, well, I know I'm interrupting. Yes, what is it, Miss Gold? I'm in a session with a patient. Uh, I know, Doctor, but, um, you have an important call. It's, um, uh, Bruce Wayne is on the phone. Bruce Wayne? What in the vault of heaven do I have to say to Bruce Wayne? I don't know Bruce Wayne. Tell him I'm busy. But doctor, I really think you're going to want to take this call. Um, Mr. Wayne says he needs your help. Oh, and what, pray, is the urgent affliction? Doesn't he realize you don't seek psychiatric care for tennis elbow? Sir, he, um, what he said, um, Dr. Crane, um, Bruce Wayne thinks he's Batman. Dr. Crane's eyes widen to their limit. Doctor... Hold all my other calls today, Miss Gold. In actuality, Miss Tom, tell Mr. Wayne I will meet with him at the clinic in one hour. And, uh, Harvey! Yeah. Good work today. Let's get you back home to Penguin. I think we can pick this up again at our next appointment. I'd just like to say, you are making excellent progress. And so Harvey Dent is spared the effects of gravity. 
but the pull of something invisible and inexorable waxes on. These are the physics of life and death in Gotham City. This Thursday night, live from Maxi Zeus's fabulous Gotham City Olympus, see divine perfection descend from the Pantheon to compete in the 53rd annual Miss Gotham City pageant. She's our own hometown goddess, inoffensive and modest. She's Miss Gotham City. See 28 of the most beautiful daughters of Mother Gotham compete for the crown in the elegant evening wear competition. The swimsuit competition. All right, so the animals. And the uh, many wonderful surprises of the talent competition. Okay, and what exactly have you accomplished in your life, you wise guys? That's the 53rd annual Miss Gotham City pageant live from the Gotham City Olympus. Gorgeous and witty and judged by committee, she's Miss Gotham City. Gotham, a rotting wreck of ambition foundered on a reef of greed. Join us once again for a tale of life and death in Gotham City. The office of Dr. Jonathan Crane, psychiatrist. The couch in this room has been host to a dazzling array of peculiar minds. Bruce Wayne's is merely the latest. Doctor, I need your help. It would seem you certainly do, Mr. Wayne. And urgently, from the look of it, your intake papers are quite a read. Let's see, under occupation, you wrote, I am vengeance. And under marital status, you wrote, I am the knight. Yes, well... Under reason for visit, you've written, so that evildoers everywhere will taste cold justice. Yes, yes, indeed. Help is exactly what you need, and badly, Mr. Wayne. You need help concocting a lie. I'm sorry? You don't think you're Batman. You're pretending to think you are Batman, and the ruse is painfully transparent. This is just the kind of childish fantasy I'd expect from someone with your background, idle and overeducated. Listen to this. <laughs> you wrote, criminals are a superstitious and cowardly lot. <laughs> but simply can't be how the real Batman talks, and you know that, don't you? You've met him, haven't you? More than once, as I recall. I bet he impressed you, didn't he? Doctor, this isn't... Uh, now a diagnosis comes into view, Mr. Wayne. You're obsessed with this daring mystery man, aren't you? You met him a few times, and you probably think you're friends. Doctor... A word of advice, Mr. Wayne. Never match wits with someone trained in deduction. You reveal so much more than you think you do. Is that so? You're clearly in no need of medical attention. As for what provoked you to concoct this duplicitous scheme, it frankly does not arouse my professional interest. But I'll make a referral. Now, get out. You've wasted enough of my time. Okay, you got me. You're impossible to get a hold of, so I adopted an aggressive acquisition strategy. <laughs> There's the tedious boardroom jargon that's your native tongue. Doctor, I'll get right to the point. I know you're treating Harvey Dent at the behest of Oswald Cobblepot. Ah, uh, Harvey Dent. Harvey is my friend. And if you believe he has a chance at rehabilitation, I want it to be in a loving and supportive environment. Oswald Cobblepot does not provide that. I want you to transfer care over to me. I won't ask you how you know these things. Information is a commodity in this city, and all kinds of treasures are within your means, one would imagine. But really, you're not an utter knave. You must know. If I did, for some unfathomable reason, give you Mr. Dent, Penguin would crush you into pâté grand mère. He'll try, but Harvey can make my custodianship of him legal. Ah, yes, the... Celebrated legal skills of your friend, the erstwhile district attorney, Harvey Dent. 
Another powerful crime-fighting figure you admire. And don't I recall you are also on a first-name basis with Commissioner Gordon? Do we need to talk about a law enforcement fixation? We're talking about Harvey, Doctor. Oh, don't get me wrong. You've irritated me with your crude deception, but you would be a fascinating case to study. The real source of your obsession is obvious, isn't it? Look around my office. Do you like my choice of decor? What do you see? You collect old movie posters. Yes. I am a collector. But to be more precise, I collect old Argus Studios horror movie posters. I confess, I am an unabashed fan of the creature features. You see, when I was a very little boy, I was taken to the movie matinee, a classic chiller. Any concern that I might be too tender an age for such fair was utterly unfounded. I wasn't scared. I was fascinated, not by the film, but by the audience. I simply couldn't believe it. This crowd of people was paying money to suffer fear. I became a habitué of the Late Late Show, my absolute favorite, of course, the maestro, the great Basil Carlo, man of a thousand faces, all of them hideous. Now that was a man who made you beg him to frighten you. And I find that paradox intoxicating. Now, you went to the movies when you were a little boy too, didn't you, Bruce? That was a pretty memorable night, wasn't it? Or perhaps you've suppressed the memories. What do the movies make you think of, Bruce? Is that a subject you'd care to talk about? Dr. Crane. A mother, a father, and their loving son. Not to see a movie. Was that your last happy memory, Bruce? Dr. Crane. I'm here to make you an offer. You have nothing I want. I have grant money beyond any... <laughs> grant money? Is that the only tool in your kit? Uh, would you like tenure? Name the university. Oh, I have... Please stop. This is ritual humiliation. I have a copy of Basil Carlo's last film. What? What did you say? I said I have a copy of The Second Skin. There are no copies of The Second Skin. They were all destroyed decades ago. Oh, so you know it. You are a fan. A fan? That film is a legendary lost masterwork, the Holy Grail. I just know it's the film where Basil Carlo committed his real-life crimes. I hope mine is the only one. It's said to be dangerous to the suggestible. How do you have this? All kinds of treasures are within my means, one would imagine. But the second skin isn't just some cinema obscurity. It, it, it wasn't just avant-garde subliminal editing. It was conceived to be a flawless simulation of violent madness. It is a masterpiece. They say your masterpiece is an instructional film on how to be a psychopath. My copy was recently found in an unrelated purchase of vintage film stock, and I've been advised to have it destroyed. <laughs> but if it's as unique as you say it is, I thought there might be some value in clinical analysis. You could lead that project. Just give me Harvey. Even if I did, you won't recognize him. Whatever he was before, he is now a violent criminal to his core. Even the element of his persona, which is most recognizable to you as your former friend, has given his life entirely to a pursuit of infamy. Let me worry about that. And this notional kidnapping, how do you expect to steal something precious from the Penguin? I can assist you from the inside, but Penguin has Two-Face under constant armed guard, the cream of his casino security. You just do your part from the inside, as you say. And as for the rest, well, that's the easy part. I'll just call in a favor from a friend. And what friend of yours is up to the task? Who else, Doctor? My good friend, the Batman. Rescue is at hand for Two-Face, but can there be any liberty from the prison of his mind? And what of Dr. Crane? His session with Bruce Wayne concluded, what dread price will he claim as his hourly rate? The reek of fear, 
it hangs heavy over life and death in Gotham City. To be continued. Batman The Audio Adventures. Written and directed by Dennis McNicholas. Batman, created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger. Based on characters from DC. With performances by Jeffrey Wright, Aristotle Atari, Ike Barinholtz, Rosario Dawson, Steve Higgins, Toby Huss, Gillian Jacobs, John Leguizamo, Dennis McNicholas, Tim Meadows, Seth Myers, Bobby Moynihan, Chris Parnell, Katie Rich, Ben Rogers, Paul Shear, Pete Schultz, Brooke Shields, Brent Spiner, Keenan Thompson, Alan Tudyk, Bradley Whitford, Melissa Villasenor, Eli Brugelin, Doug Bossy, Ranjani Brow, Chris Gibney, Julie Larson, Erica Phillips, Rosie Phillips, Tony Phillips, Zoe Phillips, Deirdre Quinn, Robbie Wyckoff, Executive Producers, John Berg, Angela Petrella. Produced by Dennis McNicholas. Executives in charge of production, Shalene Desai, Peter Girardi. Producer, Tyler Dorson. Production services by Cast Media. Producer, Colin Thompson. Coordinating producer, DJ Lubell. Music by Doug Bossy. Sound recording, design, and mixing by Big Yellow Duck. Sound design, mixing, dialogue editing, and re-recording mixing by Chris Gibney. Dialogue editing and additional post-production by Julie Larson. Original songs by Doug Bossy and Tony Phillips. The characters and events depicted in this podcast are fictional. Any similarity to any actual person, living or dead, or to any actual events, firms, places, and institutions or other entities is coincidental and unintentional. This podcast is protected under the laws of the United States and other countries, and its unauthorized duplication, distribution, or exhibition may result in civil liability and criminal prosecution. Country of First Publication, United States of America. Batman, The Audio Adventures. Copyright 2022, Warner Brothers Entertainment Incorporated. Batman and all related characters and elements are trademark and copyright DC. All rights reserved. <laughs>